Hey folks, today I'm going to talk about the Emotiva XB2. Emotiva has a series of pop-up events and they came to Huntsville, Alabama. So I went up there to talk to them and about a couple days afterward, I had a pair of speakers sitting on my doorstep for me to review. And if you want to see the specs, here you go. I was really excited to go ahead and review these because a lot of you have been asking me about these. I reviewed one of their speakers. I want to say it's like the B1, uh, maybe it's the B1 Plus from a few years back. And then they discontinued that line and came out with this XB series of speakers. So I asked specifically about the XB2. And then also I'll be doing the XT2, which is their tower version uh, at some point. When I got these in, I set them up in my living room. It's the same situation. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me have this whole spiel of, I pointed them at me. I pointed them away from me. I put them on the wall. Blah, 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 and all this crap, right? So uh, what I can tell you is that when I listened to them, the very first thing I noticed watching television was that the upper mid-range sounded recessed. And I thought, you know, that could just be whatever it is that I'm watching. I don't know how it's mixed and mastered and produced for television. So whatever. So I kind of just ignore that aspect. We'll watch a little bit more television. And then later on, I switched over to music. And first thing, you know, start off with Michael Jackson's Want to Be Starting Something. Why? Uh, because I know that track very well. And it has a lot of different instruments. It's got Michael's voice who... You know, even though he's a male, it's a little bit higher register, so it's kind of like getting that female register. Um, but that track also has a lot of percussion in it. It has a hi-hat and a shaker as well in it. So speakers that are typically bright will definitely stand out with that track. And when they are more neutral, it won't stand out as much at, as it should. So when I listen to that track, the two things I noticed immediately, again, that upper mid-range sounded a little bit recessed. And for me, it wasn't so much the vocal like it was when I watched television, but in this time, it was the snare. In the snares, you expect some impact, and that impact can be just ballparking, usually around like two kilohertz or so. If you don't hear the impact, or maybe if it sounds a little bit subdued, then it's typically going to be in that 2K range, and it's going to be maybe a little bit of a scoop through there. It's also typical to have this issue with most standard speakers that use uh, two-way design, especially if the tweeter is separated from the midwoofer. In this case, it's an AMT tweeter, and it's separated from the midwoofer, but not like super far. The further the tweeter is separated from the midwoofer, the lower the crossover point needs to be. But most speakers, especially in the budget range of speakers, aren't going to be able to put in a good crossover that allows a low crossover frequency because that still costs extra money. So having said that, when I say that I noticed this thing, I am also comparing it to other speakers that do a really good job of handoff from a six and a half inch woofer to maybe a waveguide, or maybe it's a three-way design with the dedicated mid-range and then the tweeter on top of it. There's a really nice and good radiation handoff from tweeter to mid. And in this case, that scoop in that upper mid range is due to a non-ideal handoff between the tweeter and the mid. But, all that sounds negative, but it wasn't a real big issue. So that scoop through there is something that a lot of us are used to hearing, again, especially with more budget-friendly speakers. And sometimes people will describe that sound as warm. You had that BBC dip. Now, in these cases, it's not done intentionally like the BBC dip was, uh, but it's kind of a similar effect. Now, moving up to the higher frequency with that shaker, with the hi-hat, it also stood out to me as a little bit... I hate to use the word aggressive because of the nomenclature that it typically arrives with, but yeah, maybe a little bit aggressive, maybe a little bit bright. Now, this is what the speakers aimed directly at me. So then what I tried, like most of the time, is I took the speakers and I towed them away from me. So I started off with like aiming them kind of behind my head, and then I towed them out directly to where they're facing out into the room. So they're not pointing directly at my ears, more like this, uh, that they're pointing more out into the room. And doing that dropped the treble enough where it didn't sound like the shaker and the hi-hat were as aggressive as before. Now, doing all of this, what I wound up landing on was to aim the speaker behind my head, about 10 to 20 degrees. And that's what I'm going to recommend. So I talked about towing in and towing out, but let me give you a graphic example here. 
In black, we have the speaker pointed directly at you. In blue, it will be crossing behind your ears. And in red, it will be pointed more out into the room at 30 degrees. You can see as you tow the speaker away from you, you're bringing down the high frequency some. So you go from uh, maybe about plus three decibels or so in the high frequency compared to the mid range. And then you're closer to inline, maybe about plus one, one and a half. And then at 30 degrees, you're more neutral. But I personally liked the speaker when it was firing behind my head, not too far towed out. That, that was the better balance for me. If we focus on the frequency response linearity at 20 degrees, we can see the average sensitivity is about 86 decibels. That's right in line with most bookshelf speakers. Some are lower, very few are higher, and if they are, they're not gonna have very good bass extension to speak of. And speaking of bass extension, F3 at 62 hertz, F10 at 43 hertz. So you're gonna have pretty decent bass extension in the room, but I do recommend a subwoofer. Overall, aside from those two little nitpicks, I think this is a great speaker. Currently retails for $550 a pair. It's actually on sale for $450 a pair. And I think at that price and even the $550 a pair price, it's probably top three bookshelf speakers in this price range and overall performance and linearity. Most speakers in this price range, most of them, not all of them, uh, are pretty non-neutral. And they're either way too bright or they have some serious resonance issues in the lower mid-range area. And this speaker doesn't really have that. As I said, yeah, it's a little bit aggressive, but you can either do one of two things. You can point them more out into the room, maybe a little bit further away from you, or you can use a single high shelf filter and then just kind of drop it down a decibel or two to your liking. If you have equalization, you probably already got that, like a mini DSP or direct live or something like that. You should be able to make that adjustment very quickly on the fly. The base output capability of these speakers, they get down to about 50 to 60 hertz in room, which is probably going to be adequate for most people. But I like bass to go a little bit further. I would recommend considering getting a subwoofer for this speaker. You don't have to have the world's best subwoofer. You just need something that will get you down to maybe 40 hertz, 30 hertz in room, unless you're doing home theater. You can also consider something like maybe... $400 budget friendly ish subwoofer, maybe a 12, something like that. Maybe a good, maybe a good 10 would even suffice. In terms of overall output and dynamics, that's where the speaker kind of starts to show its cost factor. So you can build a really neutral sounding speaker for about five to 800 bucks. But what you're going to give up there is typically going to be either low frequency extension or just overall output capability. So this speaker gives you pretty decent low frequency extension, certainly for the size of its bookshelf size. And it also gives you really good neutrality, again, slightly towed out. But in that regard, it does give up overall SPL capability, specifically in multi-tone distortion, where you can see that the multi-tone distortion increases to about negative 20 decibels, which is above my personal threshold. This area is gonna sound a bit grainy. So if you're really trying to well on these speakers, then you're gonna run into that issue where the top, or the, well, I should say, maybe like the mid of the mid range is gonna sound compressed, potentially grainy. Now, if you're listening to these speakers in a typical room, maybe no more than maybe like 10 feet away, and your average SPL is, let's just say it's around like 85 decibels or so, then you're gonna be okay. But if you're sitting further away or you're trying to get much louder than that, you expect to run into those distortion and compression issues. And in terms of compression, if we just look at this, where we talk about the linearity of the speaker's performance, the thing that stands out to me here is not necessarily the deviation of compression, but the number of minor deviations. So it, it just seems very irregular in its overall deviation. Well, what does this mean in terms of sound? Well, that means that, you know, some instruments may not have the same bite to them at low volume versus high volume. Is it a huge deal given this speaker's price and otherwise pretty neutral performance? To me, no, not really. And I would actually prefer a speaker like this and just get a good subwoofer for it, take some of the load off on the low end and just deal with some of these deviations in the mid range and the higher frequency in terms of overall dynamic range. If you want a speaker that's gonna get louder and not have these, be prepared to spend probably 300 to $500 more to start getting incrementally better. And if you want a good jump up in overall performance, especially in neutrality, 
and while maintaining, or I should say, let me back this up, while maintaining neutrality and then getting extra output capability and lower extension, you're probably going to need to spend about $1,000 more. So now let's talk about a comparison to something that's right in the same ballpark for $499 a pair. It's the ELAC DB63. Let's look at the CEA 2034 data set before we go any further. Now I'm particularly pulling down the 20 degree metric for the Emotiva speaker. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's what I'm suggesting you listen to these speakers at. Don't point them directly at you. Don't point them necessarily directly out into the room, but point them to where they're cross-firing but behind your head. If you do that, you'll get this nice, smooth, linear response. You'll have good directivity as well. So if we go look at the ELAC, where it would be pointing directly at you, and that's the way I would recommend this speaker be listened to, actually, you can see that it has a higher Q resonance, uh, and then the high frequency, you know, it's it's pretty linear, but compared to the mid-range, there's about uh, maybe a two decibel gap or so. So the linearity of the ELAC really isn't as good as it is with the Emotiva. So if we look at the estimated in-room response, which is a really good indicator of how the speaker is going to sound in our rooms, and we say, yeah, I'm going to put one speaker in this location, and then I'm going to swap it out with the other one real fast. These are the differences that you're probably almost certainly going to hear. Again, the ELAC may sound a bit less punchy in the mid-bass. Uh, the ELAC will sound a bit more forward in the upper mid-range area, and that's because the mid-range, the lower mid-range right down here is a little bit more scooped, and then it pops back up again on the ELAC in this upper mid-range. And then you're going to notice that the Emotiva is going to sound, again, maybe a bit bright, maybe a bit more detailed, depending on how you term these things. But I would say that the ELAC maybe sound a little bit darker, a little bit less detailed. You may like the less detail or you may like the more detailed. I, I can't tell you which one you're going to like, but hopefully this gives you an idea of which speaker might be a better fit for you if you already have an idea of what you like in tonal balance. Real quick, the horizontal contour plot, about plus or minus 60 degrees, so there's going to be some good envelopment, but there is a mushrooming here between about 1 to 2 kilohertz. That's going to be that crossover. So if they'd have brought that AMT tweeter down lower in crossover level, then that would have smoothed out the handoff between the midwoofer and the tweeter, but it's also going to drive that AMT tweeter into distortion earlier. And in terms of vertical orientation, uh, plus or minus 15 degrees is probably the best, but ideally you want to be right in line with that AMT. And that does it for this review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Uh, I do have an affiliate account with Emotiva. I'm not hawking this brand. Actually, their affiliate sales commission is actually a good bit lower than Crutchfield's. But I, so and I say Crutchfield because, you know, the ELAC would be the direct competitor. Personally, I'm going to go with the Emotiva, so make of that what you will, but I will put a direct affiliate link in the description section below if you want to buy it. Uh, otherwise, just Google it and buy it the way you normally would. You can join me at patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner if you'd like behind the scenes access, some of the data early, some polls, questions and answers, and if you want to get direct contact with me for anything you might want to ask. And then finally, you can use any of my generic affiliate links in the description section below. That supports me and what I'm doing, and you can buy whatever you want at no additional cost to you, and that earns me a small commission, and I really appreciate that. I will talk to you all on the next one. Take care.